Here we will be looking at the molecular orbital bonding for second row elements in the periodic table. Specifically, we will be looking at the second row elements in the P block. So by second row, we mean that N is equal to two. So that will be the top row in our P block on the periodic table. These molecular orbitals will be more complex because P atomic orbitals will now be involved. When we look at a specific element, say carbon, we can see that its electron configuration contains a helium noble gas core plus a 2s subshell plus a 2p subshell. And you remember inside of that 2p subshell there's actually three atomic orbitals. Those would represent from the m sub L minus 1, 0, and 1. Focusing now on just the p orbitals, when two second row elements combine we have six p atomic orbitals total. These will combine and create six molecular orbitals. These p orbitals will form both sigma and pi molecular orbitals. When we look at the basic molecular orbital diagram for just the p orbitals, we can see that we form three bonding and three antibonding molecular orbitals. There's a difference between these in that the lowest energy molecular orbital is called sigma 2p, and then we have the pi 2p bonding molecular orbitals. These are degenerate and are equal in energy. Then comes the pi 2p star and sigma 2p star molecular orbitals. It's important to know that the energy level for the sigma 2p and the pi 2p molecular orbitals are very similar and these two can change position depending on the z values of the atoms involved. And remember the z values are the number of protons inside of elements. Inside of our electron configuration, remember in addition to the 2p subshell we have a 2s subshell. Those 2s orbitals combine to create a sigma 2s bonding molecular orbital and a sigma 2s star antibonding molecular orbital. When we look at the complete molecular orbital diagram for our second row element, it looks like this where the molecular orbitals that were created from the s atomic orbitals are on the very bottom. So we actually have a bonding molecular orbital, then an antibonding molecular orbital, then three bonding molecular orbitals. In addition, there still are electrons that we are not considering. When we look back at our electron configuration, we have in this noble gas core a 1s atomic orbital. What happens in this case is if we were to draw out the complete molecular orbital, the molecular orbitals created by the 1s atomic orbitals will actually be filled and they will have no effect on the bond order calculation, so we typically ignore them. So these two molecular orbitals are still there, but because at this point they will be completely filled, one's bonding, one's anti-bonding, they will have no effect on our bonding. So it's very much like core electrons. Because they have no effect on our bonding, we can ignore them. So once again, we're interested in what's going on in the valence of our atoms involved in the bond. Here we will look at diatomic molecules, and if both of the atoms in the diatomic molecules have a z-value greater than or equal to 8, we will have one particular molecular orbital diagram. This molecular orbital diagram will change when we use atoms with smaller z-values. The first one we're going to look at is F2. The z-value for fluorine is 9, so we're going to be using the molecular orbital diagram that we have shown right here. Fluorine has seven valence electrons. When we look at its electron configuration, there is two electrons in the 2s subshell and five electrons in the 2p subshell for a total of seven valence. So completely, F2 has 14 valence electrons. When we now go to our electron configuration, we start adding electrons in. Remember, we fill the lowest molecular orbital, then we go to the next one. When we start putting electrons into the pi 2p molecular orbitals, because these are degenerate, we will put one electron in the first one, then an electron in the other one, then a second electron in the first one, and then a second electron in the other one. Here, when we've added our 14 valence electrons, we can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We now can calculate our bond order from our molecular orbital diagram by using the same calculation that we did previously. We want to count the number of electrons in bonding molecular orbitals. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
and then we want to subtract from that the number of electrons in antibonding molecular orbitals. So there is one, two, three, four, five, six. Eight minus four is two, and then we divide by two. This will give us an overall bond order for F2 of one. And in this case, this matches the Lewis structure that we would expect. There's a single bond between the two fluorines inside of F2, which matches our bond order of one. Just like when we were discussing atomic orbitals, we can use the orbital diagram to, de to determine if our molecule is paramagnetic or diamagnetic. In this case, F2 would be diamagnetic because there are no unpaired electrons in our molecular orbital. When the two elements that are involved in our diatomic molecule both have a Z value less than or equal to 7, the pi 2p molecular orbital is actually lower in energy than the sigma 2p molecular orbital. So these two change positions. So it's very important to understand what the z values are because this will have an effect on the molecular orbital diagram. When we look at the molecular orbital diagram for N2, nitrogen has a z value equal to 7, so it matches our statement here that the z values need to be less than or equal to 7. If you look, each nitrogen has a valence of 5. The total N2 has 10 valence electrons. When we take our molecular orbital diagram, we put our 10 valence electrons into it. We once again can calculate the bond order. In this case, there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 electrons in bonding molecular orbitals, and there is only 1, 2 electrons in antibonding molecular orbitals. If we take 8 minus 2 and divide by 2, we get that there should be a bond order of 3 inside of nitrogen. And this once again matches our Lewis structure for nitrogen inside of which has a NN triple bond. Thus far we've looked at diatomic molecules where both of the elements were the same. So what will happen if the two elements are not the same? In particular, if one of the elements is either oxygen or fluorine, the pi 2p molecular orbital will be higher in energy. So remember that's the big difference. Is it the pi 2p or the sigma 2p molecular orbital higher in energy inside of the molecular orbital? So if one of our elements is oxygen or fluorine, the pi 2p molecular orbital will be higher. Here we look at a molecule in O minus. I want to count the number of valence electrons. So nitrogen has five valence, oxygen has six, and then we add an electron due to the negative charge. So NO minus has 12 valence electrons. So here's the molecular orbital diagram. Once again, the pi 2p molecular orbitals are higher in energy. We start putting electrons in. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. For the 11th and 12th, remember that because these two molecular orbitals are degenerate, they have the same energy, we will put an electron into one and then an electron into the other one. This is based off of Hund's rule. Also, we need to make sure that the electrons are spin paired. So if the first one is going up, the second one also needs to be going up. When we calculate the bond order, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons in bonding molecular orbitals, and one, two, three, four electrons in antibonding molecular orbitals. We take eight minus four and divide by two. We get a bond order of two. And so when we look at the Lewis structure for no minus, this matches it. There is a double bond between nitrogen and oxygen, and the nitrogen contains the negative charge. Also, based off of looking at the molecular orbital diagram, we can tell that this molecule is paramagnetic because we have unpaired electrons. For the next molecule, Cn minus, both elements have a z value less than or equal to 7. So that means the sigma 2p molecular orbital will be higher in energy. I want to count valence electrons. Carbon has four valence electrons. The nitrogen has five. We also add an electron due to the negative charge. So in total, Cn minus has 10 valence electrons. When we go to the molecular orbital diagram, remember the sigma 2p molecular orbital is higher in energy. We add our 10 valence electrons and then we calculate the bond order. So there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons in bonding molecular orbitals. And there's only two electrons in antibonding molecular orbitals. If we take eight minus two and divide by two, 
we get that there is a bond order of three. And this matches our Lewis structure in that carbon and nitrogen are expected to share a triple bond. Also, we can tell based off of the molecular orbital diagram that CN minus would be expected to be diamagnetic, and this is because there is no unpaired electrons in the molecular orbital diagram.